Presidential candidates and political pundits have this tendency to point to the stock market as a sign of success or failure for an administration, depending on which side of the aisle they're on. Today, we're going to find out the truth about which party results in higher stock market returns. And given what we're about to discover, should you consider repositioning your portfolio in anticipation of the election? For this, I'm going to be using the total returns of the S&P 500. So I'm including dividends as well not just the price returns. And I know the S&P 500 isn't the perfect representation of the total stock market since it's mostly larger companies in the US, but it is the data set that we have the most history for, which allows me to go all the way back to 1928. Before we start breaking down by political party, I wanna look at how the stock market performs in an election year. So if we look all the way back from 1928 through year to date, 2024, that's 25 elections, including this one. So during election years, the S&P 500 earned on average 11.95% per year. During non-election years, the S&P 500 earned on average 11.98% per year, almost identical. Now, this is the message that most articles and advisors will convey when it comes to the stock market and the election. And while it is true, like with anything, it actually depends on the time period that you're using. So instead of looking at the last 97 years, if we just look at the last 50 years, there actually is a substantial difference in the stock market performance between election and non-election years. So you can see here, 11% for election years and 14.5% for non-election years. Now, that difference is primarily driven by 2008, which was a huge crash and an election year. So if you remove 2008, it brings election and non-election years a lot closer together. In other words, if you remove the cause of the difference, there's no longer a difference. But really the market performance in an election year is not consistently above or below the performance in a non-election year. 2008 being the one exception and the one thing that can kind of skew this if you're looking at it from different time periods. Now, election years do tend to be a little more volatile. As we can see here, you get a tad more volatility in the 12 months leading up to November in an election year compared to a non-election year. But honestly, even that is not a huge difference. Now let's get to the divisive part. Stock market performance under Democrats versus Republicans. I'll go back all the way to 1928 and then we'll look at some more recent time periods within our lifetime. So if you take the average annual returns of the S&P 500 over the last 97 years, including year to date 2024, Democrats on average had an average annual return of 14.9%. Republicans had an average annual return of 8.6%. So why the big difference? A few things. The Great Depression uh, and the stock market crash of 1929 happened under a Republican president, Herbert Hoover. The stock market during those early years of the depression were brutal. The average annual loss during those four years was about 22.7% per year. If you had $1,000 invested at the beginning of 2029, it would have been worth only $357 at the end of his term in 1932. So that plays a big role in this comparison. Another notable administration or notable events during an administration was the George Bush era, George W. Bush. Early in that administration, we had September 11th. The stock market was down 12% that year and 22% the following year. And then that administration ended with the 2008 housing crisis, which was a loss of 37%. So those two events contributed to what is called the lost decade, where the S&P 500 actually lost money over a 10-year period from 1999 to 2009. Had you put in $1,000 when Bush first became president, at the end of his eight-year administration, you would have $791, an average annual loss of about 2.9% per year for eight years. So the events that took place during those two administrations, Hoover and Bush, is the primary driver of this gap uh, between Democrats and Republicans. If you take out those years, the stock market performance between Democrats and Republicans end up being pretty close. Obviously, we can't ignore those events because they happened and uh, caused a lot of financial devastation. I just say that to show what that difference is largely attributed to. And actually, those two administrations over the last 97 years are the only two administrations where the stock market ended lower at the end of their term than at the beginning. All other presidential administrations ended their term with the stock market higher than when they started. And if you wanted to see a more uh, recent history, here's what the average annual S&P 500 performance looked like under a Democrat president versus a Republican president over the past 50 years. And here's the past 30 years. And then finally, over the past 15 years. And just for fun, here's a breakdown of the average annual return during each president's term, uh, broken out by party, with Bill Clinton taking the lead on the Democrat side and Trump on the Republican side. Now, Calvin Coolidge did have the lead on the Republican side at 43.6% in 1928, 
but I only had one year of data for him, not his entire administration. Uh, and that was the bull market of, of 1928 leading up to the Great Depression. So that kind of skewed things a little bit. I removed that, um, but just putting that out there for sake of transparency. But that's not even the most interesting part. What's more interesting to me is how the stock market performance looks when we consider the majority party in Congress, because it's not just the president making decisions. So this is going back to 1929. Again, I excluded the Calvin Coolidge year of 1928 since I didn't have data for his full term. And for the purposes of what I wanted to look at here, I think it made sense to exclude. So this is the average annual performance of the S&P 500 when you have a Democrat president with a Democrat majority Congress, and then a Democrat president with a divided Congress, and a Democrat president with a Republican Congress. On the flip side, here's what it looks like when you have a Republican president with a Democrat Congress, Republican president with a divided Congress, and a Republican president with a Republican Congress. So one thing you may notice is that the stock market historically performed the best with a divided Congress. And this remains true over multiple time periods, the past 70 years, 50 years, 30 years, even the last 15 years. The stock market on average consistently did better with a split Congress, regardless of who was president. You would think that if a president had a unified Congress, they would be more effective at implementing policies that supposedly would help the economy and the stock market. But that's just not the case here. The stock market has performed better with a split Congress, regardless of who was president. Not exactly sure why that is. Could just be a uh, happenstance. Would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, maybe the government getting nothing accomplished is uh, was best for all of us. All right, so some interesting data points here, but what does it really tell us? There are some correlations between the stock market and who's in the White House, uh, or even which party controls Congress. But these are really just small pieces of a much larger puzzle. The market movements are influenced by a whole range of factors, the economy, interest rates, business earnings, geopolitical conflicts, future investor expectations of all of those things. Yes, the president might have some influence over these, but certainly not all, and uh, not always in a significant way even. In fact, I think much of what impacts the stock market is a lot of times beyond the president's control. In addition to that, the policies of one administration often build on or respond to those of the previous administration. And it just creates this ripple effect that really goes far beyond just a single presidential term. What is really the most important thing to remember is that most administrations have left office with the stock market being higher than when they entered, with the exception of uh, some unique events. Regardless of party, the stock market continues to grow over a long period of time. If you had invested only when a Democrat was president, your portfolio would have grown. If you had invested only when a Republican was president, your portfolio also would have grown. But neither could come even close to had you just stayed invested the whole time, regardless of who was president. Now, this is not investment advice. These are just my personal thoughts. I would not let who's in the White House impact my investment strategy. My goal is to keep contributing, stay invested, focus on the long term, instead of trying to time the market based on these political cycles. If your portfolio is built to reflect everything that you wanted to accomplish and, and your risk tolerance, then at that point, you really just have to ride it out through the chaos. The stock market is much bigger than one person or one administration. And I think letting politics drive your investment strategy could lead you away from the, the bigger, longer term picture that really matters.